Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edgewitch channel. Today, we will be discussing about a medicine topic that is downer cow syndrome. That is the main differential diagnosis of downer cow syndrome. So, whenever we are doing large animal practice, the most important and most urgent case is downer cow syndrome. So, we have to be very much vigilant in case of any downer cow syndrome because poor diagnosis can lead to death. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So what is downer cow syndrome? The term downer cow is used to denote non-ambulatory periparturian cattle that is recommended for at least 24 hours without obvious reasons. So depending upon the recumbency, the mental status, the hydration status, the feeding status, we will be mainly classify them to two groups that is alert downers and non alert downers. Whereas alert downers are mainly downers that are mentally alert, non ambulatory, that can eat and drink and that can urinate and defecate and all. So able to maintain their normal health status, internal recumbency are called as alert downers. Whereas non alert downers they have moderate to severe mental augmentation that can be due to the toxic chemicals which might have accumulated in the blood, which might have attacked the brain and abnormal vital signs will be the main frequent pattern in case of non alert downers. So there is another term that is creeper cow which is used to denote alert recumbent cows that are unable to bear weight on their hind limbs. But they will be using the forelegs to propel them towards the front side. So they are creeping. They are creeper cow. So moving to the most important part of this video that is the differential diagnosis which we might rule out in case of downer cow. So in any downer cases, always we should have to check the blood, serum parameters, the electrolytes and all. And also we should do a proper clinical examination. So the first thing is metabolic disorders that is hypocalcemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. So the downer is very common in case of hypocalcemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia and also in case of severe ruminal lactic acid. So the first differential becoming is metabolic disorders. So moving to the second that is systemic illness, mainly coliform mastitis and septic metritis. So, whenever the animal is having coliform mastitis and septic metritis, animal can go to downer. So, the coliform mastitis mainly due to the antitoxins produced by gram-negative bacteria. They attack a lot of muscular cells and that can lead to muscular damage and muscular ischemic necrosis. So, the next one is musculoskeletal disorders that is fracture, joint laxation, idiopathic myopathy, ischemic myopathy. So if at all in case of hind limb fracture, pelvic fracture, those things, no, the animal won't stand up. The animal will go to downer phase. And in case of joint luxation, which is very common in case of highly alarmed cat. So the third one is nervous injury. That is calving paralysis, which is very common in the first pregnancy. That is, may also call it as obturator paralysis because the obturator nerve will be damaged due to the a fetal maternal disproportion and the other one is ischemic neuropathy and next is the peripheral neuropathy so the second and third one is not common in case of catty whereas the first thing is very much common in case of primiparous animals the fourth one is miscellaneous that is uh, we should also have to see the pregnancy stress the energy status the blood glucose levels the amount of volatile fatty acids produced in the room and etc and in case of thaleriosis, that is hemoproteinosis disease, which is mainly seen in cattle, and also trypanosomiosis. So we have to rule out these three things. So, out of these four main categories, we have to rule out all the subcategories. So, these are some pharmaceutical products, which is mainly having additional supplementation of energy, that is uremin, which is sodium acid phosphate that will lead to production of ATP. And this is Neuroxin MS2500, that is methyl cobalamin injection. So that will be mainly helping 
to regain the lost neuronal health. So next is the AD3H. We all know the important properties of vitamin D3, calcium, metabolism and all. And also vitamin E, that is antioxidant action. Also, that is vitamin E and selenium injection. That is selenium and vitamin E is very much needed for the regrowth of the dead muscular cells or the injured muscular cells. And this is the oral supplementation. That is EKRSE, oral supplementation for the animal. And this is the very famous and most used injection that is methylcobalamin B6 nicotinamide. That is tribuvacan. Thank you.